Pre-Actual IBT TOEFL. Directions. This section measures your ability to understand conversations and lectures in English. You will hear each conversation or lecture only one time. After each conversation or lecture, you will answer some questions about it. The questions typically ask about the main idea and supporting details. Some questions ask about a speaker's purpose or attitude. Answer the questions based on what is stated or implied by the speakers. You may take notes while you listen. You may use your notes to help you answer the questions. Your notes will not be scored. In some questions, you will see this icon. This means that you will hear but not see part of the question. Some questions have special directions. These appear in a gray box on the screen. Most questions are worth one point. A question worth more than one point will have special instructions indicating how many points you can receive. You must answer each question. After you answer, click Next. Then click OK to confirm your answer and go to the next question. After you click on OK, you cannot return to previous questions. You will have 20 minutes to answer the questions in this section. A clock at the top of the screen will show you how much time is remaining. The clock will not count down while you are listening to test material. Note, in the listening section of the actual test, you will both hear and read the questions. Pre-actual TOEFL Passage 1 Listen to part of a lecture in a business class. Business Organizations Today we are going to discuss the formation and organization of businesses. One of the reasons I want you to understand about types of businesses is that nearly half of new businesses fail within the first two years. As business students, you will need to understand the formation of businesses to understand your role in the business world after you graduate from university. If you are an accounting major, you will need to know about businesses for different reasons than business students who continue on to study law. If you are thinking about getting a degree in marketing or management, you will need to have an understanding about the composition of the types of business organization you are working for. You will find there are various types of business organizations and that there are differences in each kind because of the different factors which must be thought about and which are important when forming a business organization. The primary considerations for deciding on the type of business are liability, taxes and continuity. The three main types of businesses I want to talk to you about are the sole proprietorship, the partnership and the corporation. The proprietorship is probably the simplest type of business organization. For example, if you enjoy gardening, like working with flowers and vegetables, and want to begin a business of your own without anyone else being involved, then a sole proprietorship is what you would probably consider. This type of business is very easy to form. All you need to do is find an open sign to hang on a door, and you're in business. You'll be the person making decisions about where you want to locate your business, what items you will sell, and how much you want to charge for items. Advertising and all methods of marketing your products will be your decision. You will decide hours of operation, whether to hire employees, and make decisions such as whether you want to expand in the future or keep the size of your business small. You, personally, will be responsible for keeping track of income, paying expenses and filing taxes. Common sense tells you what the advantages and disadvantages of a proprietorship are. In a proprietorship, you have the advantage of making your own decisions and spending as much or as little time as you want with the business. If the business is successful, you will be the reason. If it fails, you also will probably be the reason. Some of the disadvantages are very obvious. How many hours do you want to work each day or week? What happens to the business if you want to take a vacation? Will you have problems if you cannot supply all of your customers' needs? What problems may result if you are not a good record keeper? If your business fails and you owe suppliers, then you will personally be responsible to them. 
Because of some of the disadvantages I just mentioned, some people prefer to form a partnership. There are various forms of partnerships, but as business students, you need to understand what a basic or general partnership is. A partnership is a voluntary association between two or more people who carry on a business for the purpose of making a profit. For example, you and a friend decide you want to buy houses, fix them up and make repairs, and then resell them. If one of you has money to invest and the other has talent, such as construction experience, to invest, then you can form a partnership. If both of you have money to invest and no construction experience, then you can also form a partnership. If you both have construction experience but no money, then as a practical matter to make a partnership work, you better think about getting another partner, one with money. In a general partnership, the partners are expected to share the work equally or contribute equally in time spent in the business. Partners share profits and losses of the business, and they are equally responsible for expenses. Partnerships file informational tax returns, but the partners are taxed on the partnership's income as individuals. Sometimes people entering a partnership will prepare a partnership agreement or will have an attorney prepare a partnership agreement for them. But I have known people who have been in partnership for years without any kind of a written agreement. So, a partnership can be easy to form as a sole proprietorship, but it also has a potential for greater growth or loss. Also, as a practical matter, people may want to think about going into partnerships with friends. Sometimes, being in business with a friend can be the end of a friendship. A corporation is the third main type of business organization. One main advantage of a corporation is that its life is continuous. You all know that corporation owners are called shareholders and that corporations have officers who run the company and boards of directors which make decisions in the best interests of the company. Another advantage of a corporate form of business is that there is limited liability. The owners or shareholders can only be liable for the company's losses up to the amount he or she has invested. So that is definitely an advantage for small investors. One of the main disadvantages of the corporate form is that there can be a greater taxation. But there are accounting decisions which can make the tax bite less. Remember, you are not yet owners, accountants, managers, attorneys or corporate officers. At this point in time, you do not need to have a detailed understanding of any of the business forms I have discussed. What you do need to remember is the general information about each form and know that when you become involved in a business and need help in understanding something, there are experts to whom you can turn. Now get ready to answer the questions. You may use your notes to help you answer. Number 1. What is the lecture mainly about? Number 2. In the lecture, the professor describes some characteristics of a corporation. Indicate whether each is a characteristic. Click in the correct box for each statement. Number 3. Why does the professor mention that many new businesses fail within the first two years? Number 4. According to the professor, what is one important characteristic of a sole proprietorship? Listen again to part of the lecture, then answer the question. Number 5. What does the professor mean when he says this? Sometimes, being in business with a friend can be the end of a friendship. Listen again to part of the lecture, then answer the question. What you do need to remember is the general information about each form and know that when you become involved in a business and need help in understanding something, there are experts to whom you can turn. Number 6. Why does the professor say this? There are experts to whom you can turn.